Whether you're an elite runner preparing to run a marathon in under two and a half hours, or you'll just be happy to avoid the cutoff time, your approach to eating and drinking will have a significant impact on your performance. In this How to Fuel a Marathon series, we're gonna tell you everything you need to know to nail your marathon race nutrition strategy. What should be your focus when you're planning what to eat and drink during your race? Well, when you boil it down to the fundamentals, there are three acute costs of running a marathon. Calories burned, mainly in the form of carbohydrates, fluid lost as sweat, which is water, and sodium that you lose in your sweat. The topic of good nutrition practice is more complex than this, but ultimately replacing a decent proportion of carbohydrates, fluid, and sodium should be the focus of any marathon nutrition strategy. In order to pull what we call the three levers effectively, it's important to know your own carb, sodium and fluid numbers well before you get to the start line. So let's take a look at each of the levers in turn, starting with carbohydrate numbers that you should be aiming to hit. Carbs are the main source of fuel used during exercise. The average person has only got about 2000 calories of carbohydrates stored in their body as glycogen and you can burn through a lot of that during 90 to 120 minutes of running. So even the very best marathon runners in the world who are gunning for times of 2 hours and 20 minutes or less need to be taking on carb sources like gels, chews and drink mixes. These are fast fuel for when you're working hard but they're in limited supply so you need to be topping up frequently if your exercise intensity is going to be sustained beyond the point when your glycogen stores would become depleted. If they become depleted significantly, you'll find yourself hitting the infamous wall that was once thought to be inevitable for all marathon runners. Fueling and hydration is where my thinking as a marathon runner myself and as a coach has evolved the most over the entire time that I've been involved in this sport. When I first started running marathons in 2007, yes, gels were available, yes, there was water on the course, but the idea was to try and stay as light as possible and really only take what you needed maybe later on in the race. And as the years have gone on and the science around all this has evolved, I realized, and many others, that we had it all wrong that fueling is very very important yeah historically it was pretty limited i didn't do that much for fueling for sessions or races to be honest i understood that the marathon was a different beast and that it was like a whole journey of education to go through to make sure i was hitting the right numbers and the right timing thankfully there are now guidelines for how much carb you should be able to consume per hour to sustain your performance based on your target marathon time as you'd expect, it's advantageous for faster elite runners to aim to consume more carbs per hour in order to perform at their best because they're working very, very hard. For runners aiming for sub 230, 90 to 120 grams an hour is now recommended. For 2 hours 30 to 3 hours, it's about 75 to 90 grams an hour. 3 hours to 3 hours 30, it's more like 60 to 90 grams an hour. 3 hours 30 to 4 hours, 60 to 75 grams an hour and for four hours plus, 60 grams an hour should be sufficient. Whilst your target carb numbers will be relatively fixed, how much fluid you need to drink can be very variable as it will be dictated by how much fluid you lose through sweat. How much fluid you sweat out or your sweat rate will be influenced by how hard you're working, the ambient temperature and humidity, clothing choices, genetics, and even your heat acclimation status. It's a good idea to measure how much you sweat during training runs in similar conditions to those you're likely to face on race day. This isn't as technical as it sounds. Check out the video card for a simple protocol to help you measure your sweat rate and dial in your hydration strategy. I just need to have a better understanding of how much sweat I'm losing in different conditions. And that kind of can be very varied depending on the humidity and the heat. So practicing more with that and measuring what my sweat rate looks like in different environments and then applying that to whatever the conditions are on race day. That's going to be really important. The reason it's important to understand your own sweat rate is because dehydration occurs when the fluid you sweat out drastically exceeds your fluid intake. Dehydration leads to reduced total blood volume and stroke volume, which makes running feel harder. It also increases core temperature and heart rate, which accelerate fatigue. It can even cause GI issues if blood is directed away from your gut. You shouldn't be aiming to replace 100% of your sweat losses with the fluid you drink, but you do want to be replacing a decent proportion. 
The science suggests that you should be aiming to avoid losing more than about 2-4% of your body mass by the end of the race. As a ballpark figure, drinking 300 to 600 millilitres of fluid per hour would be a suitable target in normal temperatures, especially if you get to the start line well hydrated. I have found just through my own research, through myself and my own athletes, if you can get in on an average day, say 500 milliliters of water per hour, so half a liter, you're going to be in pretty good shape. I find that most people can't take much over 750 as it is in a marathon when you're really running intensely and it's a not super, super hot day. On the low end, I've seen people get in 250 milliliters or less, which I just don't think is enough. So I advise most people to shoot for that half a liter per hour and try to do that consistently throughout the race. But if you are someone who is a much heavier sweater, you might need to be closer to that 750 range um, and doing that consistently over the course of your race. The third key lever to pull on during your marathon is sodium, which is the main electrolyte lost in your sweat. The sodium content of sweat varies dramatically from person to person and given the variations in sweat rate we've already talked about, your net sweat sodium losses could be significant, particularly during warm races. We know from conducting thousands of sweat tests that the average athlete loses about 950 milligrams of sodium per litre of sweat, with some losing as little as 200 milligrams a litre and salty sweaters like me losing close to 2000 milligrams per litre or more. So it's a good idea to work out where you sit on the salty sweat continuum and get a handle on your own sodium numbers. From the standpoint of electrolyte loss, I think the most accurate way is to get in and get a sweat test done. Um, you know, it's very non-invasive and gives you very accurate data in terms of, hey, here is the concentration of your sweat, what you are losing on an hourly basis. And then you can really, really dial in your needs if you are just a, a light sweater, if you're a mild sweater, moderate sweater, or a heavy sweater, because that is gonna be very different depending on the athlete. You can get a sweat test at one of our test centers around the world, or if you can't make it to a center, there are some telltale signs to look out for that could indicate if you're a salty sweater. These include seeing white salt marks on your kit, clothing and skin after hot races and training sessions. Muscle cramps can sometimes be an indicator of losing a lot of salt, as can craving salt after big workouts. Check out the video which goes into more detail for the telltale signs to look out for if you're a salty sweater. Ultimately, you're looking to replace a decent proportion of the sodium you lose in your sweat and the focus should, should be on something we call relative sodium concentration. So for example, if you're losing about 500 milligrams of sodium per litre of sweat, you can use the pH 500 electrolytes, which contain 500 milligrams per litre. If you're losing more like 1,000 milligrams, pH 1,000 is probably the drink for you. And if you're a very salty sweater, you'll be reaching for the pH 1500s. To understand more about the carb, fluid and sodium numbers you should be aiming to hit during your marathon, you can use the free fuel and hydration planner at pfnh.com. In the next video, we're going to look at how you're going to hit your carb, fluid and sodium numbers on race day.